Hello, lovelies. Welcome to Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. I look forward to sharing my channeled message with you today. And if you love it, please like, share, review, and subscribe. So today I've been thinking about the paradigm shift. That moment when it seems like everyone in the world has leveled up or reached critical mass. Have you heard of this, critical mass? Basically, it's the moment when so many people have shifted to something new that it kind of just levels up the whole planet. It's an ideological breakthrough. And, well, it's often described as something that just happens all of a sudden. But it doesn't really happen all of a sudden, right? The overnight essence of it is very much perspective. I mean, there are people who truly believe that the entire universe, the entire earth was created in seven days. Now, maybe it was, but what is seven days? I mean, in Hinduism, they credit Lord Brahma for creating the earth. Of course, they say to him that one day is four million years. So who are we to decide what a day is? Who are we to decide what a shift is? is because a shift on a big grand scheme does happen in the blink of an eye though to us it may be over an extended period of time it's a paradigm shift it is something that happens when the old dies out and the new takes over this is fantastic and yet it's often taught in this mythological experience this mythological setting where we just blink one day and the teeter-totter shifts and everything is different. Yes, that can happen on an individual level. But as far as the whole planet goes, we're not going to just level up overnight. Though, look back over your life. I mean, when you think about how quickly you changed, it may seem that it happened all of a sudden. But when you look backwards, there was this great process involved. I mean, you've heard me say before... An egg looks nothing like a chicken until it does. To us, the egg has just been sitting there doing nothing. But man, on the inside, the work has been tremendous. Right? The same is true for all of us. Let's be more specific. Some of you may have heard of a theory called the hundredth monkey. There's actually a book by uh, Ken Keyes about the hundredth monkey. Basically, it is a, a story, partly true and partly untrue, and both versions are valuable. So it was like 1952 in Japan, and they're doing research on the population of monkeys who lives on this island off the coast of Japan. They start dumping massive amounts of sweet potatoes into the sand for the monkeys, and the sweet potatoes are dirty and they don't necessarily taste good. And then at some point, I think it's like six months into the study or something, one of the young monkeys, about a year and a half old, goes and takes his sweet potato and washes it in the ocean. And now it is clean and salty, and it tastes a whole lot better. So he teaches his mom and then teaches his friends who teach their moms. And over time, the young monkeys and their mothers are washing their potatoes. Now... In the 100th monkey story, the myth built around the 100th monkey, they say that when the 100th monkey washes his sweet potato, that instantaneously the rest of the island is washing their sweet potatoes. And it's only moments, albeit subjective length of time, before several of the other islands, all of the monkeys, are all washing their sweet potatoes and behaving in this different way. Now, working with the idea that this mythological story is fact, which is often represented as so, it is this unbelievable moment when that one more person is this catalyst for dramatic change. Now, I'm going to argue that this is true, even though it's not overnight, because what is a day? Little can happen in a day when it comes to a paradigm shift, to an ideological breakthrough. 
And yet there is this tapping in to the collective unconscious. But this takes time. We have to break archetypes. We have to break patterns. And so both the truth is relevant right alongside the myth. What really happened is that, yes, on this one island, they started washing the sweet potatoes. And all of the mothers and all of the babies were washing them, but it didn't become the norm. It didn't become everybody until the old in power, the ones who found it atrocious or weren't paying attention, started to fade out and the young took over. We could argue this is the whole issue between, you know, some people in my generation and older who are very focused and afraid of things being different and the millennials who are like, screw it, let's fix this place. Now, yes, there are some in every generation who are better, who are working, who are changing, who are growing, who are evolving, who are enlightening. But this, the fact that it's not just enough to have a hundred of us flip over the pendulum of time, This is why we must speak. This is why we must be willing to be a mouth for the universe. Because it's not just that when a critical number hits, we all shift. It's that when a critical number of people gets there, it begins to saturate overall consciousness. And it begins to propagate this idea of paradigm shift. We must speak up. We must live it. We must grow the collective unconscious. Now, what's fascinating, what the hundredth monkey as a story doesn't really address, is that this cultural change that happens as the monkeys over time are learning more from each other and the old ways are beginning to die out, that not only are they learning to wash their sweet potatoes in the ocean, but they're doing everything everything differently. This led to all kinds of things. The potato washing led to them washing other things. It led to them bathing themselves and ultimately to them becoming little monkey fishermen. They started swimming and catching fish and collecting the plants that lived beneath the water. And they came on the other side of it to have an entirely new way to live. Now imagine when the old, stuck in their ways, old men monkeys, right, who weren't experiencing what the youth were experiencing, what the females were experiencing. And, you know, be clear, this is not a male-female thing as far as we go. But very culturally, you know, men were hunters or whatever, and they weren't paying attention to the family. But it's within a family that we grow, right? And so the old men happen to wander across the beach, and they find all these young monkeys swimming and acting foolish and coming up with fish and shit like they've never seen before. This had to be absolutely shocking and stunning to them. And there are limitless parallels that we can come up with between strict religious dogma and spirituality, between strict politics and more liberal views there is this shock and awe when we start to change things so while yes we don't just tip the scales it isn't the hundredth monkey comes and the whole planet levels up but it is this building of collective unconscious and truly collective consciousness that then makes us all open to the fact that there is more and different. I, I'm going to admit to you, I have this resistance to completely outing myself, who I am and what I do, and the parts of my life where I don't need to. Part of this is tied to, well, childhood fears, okay? I mean, I used to see symbols of the things I do now and I was afraid of them. It's like I knew that it was going to bust up. (laughs) Okay, I get it. Like the fucking old monkeys, right? It was going to bust up who I knew myself to be and what I knew the world to be. And so I've always very slowly proceeded with caution and only let those who needed to know in on who I am. And the walls are falling, right? 
the walls are falling because there's a critical number of people who are aware and I am out there. And so, yes, everybody from high school is starting to find out and my children's friends' parents are starting to find out. And do you know what? Nobody cares. Nobody is afraid of it. Nobody's wigged out because it's different. And that is because of collective unconscious. That is the paradigm shift. That is the teeter-totter, the weighing of the scales. No, it's not overnight. It's not, bam, the whole world has leveled up. But it is. Bam, we're more open. Bam, we can accept. Bam, we can listen. And eventually... As the old monkeys die out and the new ones take over, it will be critical mass. It will be this space where we have revalued time and talent. We have revalued spiritual growth and evolution. And we have rethought who we are without fail. People on a spiritual path begin to realize that where they were is a stepping stone. They begin to evolve into new ways of being and thinking and therefore new ways of wanting to represent themselves in the world. They talk about this concept in the Celestine Prophecy about how as we evolve, we begin to realize we were in the wrong place, in the wrong field. And so we grow into the aspect of spirituality, the aspect of life we feel most aligned with. And there has to be many doors. We need the real estate agent, the teacher, the doctor, the hairdresser, the checkout girl at Target. We need all these people in the world we need every one of you everywhere you are to be a mouth through the universe to speak to be to hold energy sometimes being a mouth for the universe means silence that's okay the wisest person in the room is sometimes the quietest sometimes we're just holding wisdom we're just holding space and that helps tip the scales and sometimes we speak the truth People ask me all the time if that girl in the nail salon, if that guy fixing their toilet, if they were angels sent to them on purpose, they were doors, doors to wisdom, doors to enlightenment. Each of us is a door. Growing numbers of us are doors. More and more monkeys are washing their sweet potatoes and we're teaching others and we must. And yes, there will be old, crotchety monkeys who cannot listen. Don't scare them. They'll age and they'll fade away. Or something will shake them awake. Enlightenment can be easy or it can be hard. But we are tipping the scales. We truly are. We're tipping the scales. We're reaching critical mass. Things are changing. When I first started doing this work, it was this illusion of heightened spirituality because I was attracting to me people on a spiritual path. But over these years... It's not an illusion anymore. It's becoming the norm. We have tipped over being the minority to being the majority, to being the overwhelming norm in the world that spirituality is what's true, that it is everything, that all religions are a door to the truth, though different. And essentially... The goal is the same. Despite the fact that they exist on this continuum of truth and some are closer to pure truth than the others, they all exist as doors. Jesus said, I am the door for the sheep. I always hesitate to use that quote because I don't want anybody to think I'm calling them a damn sheep. But the truth is, we need lots of doors for the sheep. If we're going to have an ideological breakthrough, we need doors for the sheep. We need diversified curriculum. We need ways to reach each person right where they are and to get them as far as they can go. 
some people will get to remedial balancing your checkbooks when they get to their senior year while other people are taking advanced calculus and organic chemistry and things like that. It doesn't matter. The paths are all equal in value. If we're both at 80%, we're tied. Your path might be a foot long and mine might be five feet long, but if we're both at 80%, we're tied. And so when you're out there in the world, be a mouth for the universe. Help us tip the scales. Help us create the energy that will stretch and grow. And so whether it's one day or four million years, things change. It's not going to be four million years. <laughs> Within our lifetimes, we will see unbelievable, remarkable evolution. Spiritual awareness is growing at at least the rate that technology is. And think where we were 10 years ago. Think where we were. There's a lot out there right now. And I hear from a lot of people being oversaturated with what they view as negativity, what they review in their minds as things being worse or changing for the worse. But that's not actually true. It's not worse. We're aware. And we're opening the doors for that paradigm shift. Some kid invented a machine that collects plastic out of the ocean. And right now it's out there collecting plastic out of the ocean. Some kid that wouldn't have known. There are people all over the world solving problems, awakening, acknowledging, growing, changing, evolving because we have more information. Do not get caught up in the shock and awe. Be grateful it is out there and now it can be fixed. I think it's AA where they say, you know, the first step is acknowledging you have a problem. Okay. You can't hide shit anymore. We know what's going on now. Let's fix it. And yes, the tipping of the scales also requires getting the old thinking out. Getting rid of the old monkeys. Sometimes old monkeys are very young. And sometimes they're very old. But the more we shift, the more we grow, the more we be that mouth for the universe, that door for the sheep, the closer we get to the truth. So speak. But just enough. Don't push people past what they can understand. And if you don't understand, ask questions, learn, and grow. Do not allow yourself to be naive enough to think that just because it's all that you know, it's all that there is. Because the truth is it can all exist at once. If you got to fight the war outside of you instead of the war inside of you, at least acknowledge that maybe it's all true at once. Just put a crack in the armor, right? Let's switch the patterns, change the archetypes, learn and grow, and we'll hit critical mass. You know, there is the belief that at some point in evolution, some people level up so much that the others become invisible. And there's all kinds of religious and spiritual and uh, other conversations we can have around that concept but as it aligns today with what I'm telling you today with how we can shift and grow and hit that critical mass and saturate consciousness with truth it is because when the scale tips far enough the limited population of people who are not aligned they become essentially invisible and I don't mean that they should be treated differently I don't mean that it's like those of us who exist in the world and choose not to kill the fire ants in the backyard. There's one little place in my backyard where the fire ants live. 
If I leave them alone, they stay there in their own world, in their own place, doing what they need to do with each other, for each other, and they leave us alone. They don't mess with our concept of reality, and I don't have to mess with theirs. Now, if one of them comes and asks me, I will certainly help them understand. (laughs) We learn and we grow, and we make the shift. They learn and they grow, and they make the shift. Maybe it's slow, maybe it's fast, maybe it's overnight, maybe it's over time. It doesn't matter. I can feel it. I've seen it in my lifetime, continue to grow and evolve, and I've said it since the very beginning. It's like we're creating this spiral, this net around the world of light and love, and that is good enough. You do you. Grow and learn, evolve and change, challenge your bullshit. And in return, in some small way, known or not, or maybe in some huge way that everybody knows about, you will be a door to the sheep. And together, we will create the paradigm shift. Because we're each the hundredth monkey. Let that one roll around in your head. Every time we grow, we level up our entire collective consciousness. It's good stuff. And so you can affirm, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. Because it is affirmative acceptance. To be the way means that you are no hypocrite That you are an example of someone doing the best they can. To say I am the truth means I speak only what I know comes from my pure intention. And to say I am the light means that quiet or outspoken, you walk around with the awareness that there is so much more to you and so much more to life than just the mundane things upon which people get stuck or lost. And so continue in whatever your way is to attribute little bits of wisdom to the collective unconscious. And together, we'll teach everybody how to wash their sweet potatoes. Until next time, beloved. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today for this week's episode of Lessons from the Universe. If you love it, please help us attract a bigger audience, more people like you ready to continue down this path to awakening. If you love the podcast, please like, share, review, and let me know how you found me so I can find others just like you. Till next week, beloved. Namaste.